Um, hello, everyone. My name is Juan Manuel Rubio, and I'm going to present my paper, This is the Will of Allah, Crusader Medievalism in Ancestors Legacy. Ancestors Legacy is a real-time strategy video game developed and published in 2018 by Polish studio Destructive Creations. Set in the Middle Ages, the player must defend their base, collect resources, recruit armies, and develop technologies to defeat their opponents. Ancestors Legacy also has a single-player campaign mode which follows the exploits and deeds of medieval figures. Each of these campaigns are divided in five narratively driven scenarios in which the player reenacts the lives of famous kings and warriors from the medieval past. The Middle Ages portrayed in Ancestors Legacy are characterized by violence, warfare, hypermasculinity, racial homogeneity, cruelty, and religious intolerance. These last categories are especially intertwined since the game portrays a medieval world which is the most violent whenever different religions and cultures clash, being the Crusades a key example of this. Of the nine campaigns that the game offers to the player, two of them are set in crusading scenarios, the Prussian Rebellion of 1260 to 1274 against the Teutonic Knights, and the recapture of Jerusalem in 1187 by the Sultan Saladin. Although the way in which Ancestors Legacy portrays the Middle Ages is not necessarily exceptional, this case becomes particularly interesting when we consider the destructive creation's record with right-wing ideology. As the German initiative Kinding Pixel Den Fascismus points out, members of the developer team have been involved with right-wing neo-fascist and neo-pagan groups and have spread their ideas online. In this paper, I want to explore and analyze how Ancestors Legacy approaches the topic of the Crusades, considering the studio's game record and the interaction of all of its members with the far right. I will argue that Ancestors Legacy moves in a dissonant space in its understanding of crusading and the Middle Ages, in which the superficial accuracy and condemnation of Crusader clashes with the game's broader understanding of the period, which more likely resembles the far right ideas of hypermasculinity, violence, and clash of civilizations narrative. At a deeper level, the gray area in which Ancestors Legacy situates itself further highlights some of the epistemological problems behind the simulation of history in video games, meaning the often aesthetic nature of nuance and accuracy in gaming when this relates to preconceived notions about the past, political concerns, and analysis assumed expectations. Now, Distorted Creation's first polemic arose in 2014 during the development and production of Hatred, their first game. In Hatred, the player embodies the antagonist, a trench coat wearing young, dissatisfied, resentful white man who decides to go on a killing spree in New York City. The game does not give much justification for the violence. The antagonist simply claims that he's sick of life and he wants to take with him as many people as he can, after which he says, and I quote, my genocide crusade begins here, which was also one of the slogans used by the studio to advertise the game. Among the uproar, critics pointed out the sympathies by several members of the studio with far-right Polish groups. Members of the team responded to these accusations by claiming that the freedom of speech and association gave them their liberty to like any group they saw fit on social media and that they, they, and that they condemned Nazism since members of their families were killed in World War II by the Nazis. Whatever their claims, we can see far-right ideas in the games of destructive creations, most importantly in IS defense. Said in 2020, IS defense shows a world in which ISIS has managed to take control of the whole of Africa and the Middle East, placing them in a favorable position to invade Europe. The gameplay consists of an immovable turret in which the player uses to defend their position from a never-ending onslaught of icy soldiers until they are eventually overrun. The kills from one game stack up to the next one, and after a determined level, uh, number of enemies have been killed, the player moves to the next level. IS Defense came out in 2016 against the background of the 2015 migrant crisis. Its depiction of ISIS terrorists reinforces the conflation of migrants and terrorists often used by right-wing movements and politicians. Some ISIS soldiers arrive in dinghy boats, their faces are all covered to emphasize their dehumanization, and even some of the enemies are suicide bombers with explosives attached to their bodies. If these elements were not enough, some of the achievements of the player can unlock reinforces the ideas uh, with both racist and medievalist tones. So, for example, the shish kebab achievement is unlocked upon killing 100 suicide bombers. If the player kills 1,000 terrorists, they unlock the Jan III Sobieski achievement, named after the King of Poland, who defeated the Ottomans in 1863. And if the player completes the game, the Crusade complete achievement is granted. Now, this use of crusading medievalisms is not too dissimilar to the way in which the contemporary far right frames the Crusades. Heavily influenced by the aftermath of the war on terror, the Crusades tend to be romanticized by these movements in a clash of civilizations narrative in which interreligious and interracial conflict is always unavoidable. Now, this idea of the clash of civilizations of the war on terror and the Crusades were adopted from the beginning of the war on terror by all sides. Bush and Rumsfeld used religious and crusader rhetoric to justify their actions in the Middle East. 
uh, movements like groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS also use the Crusades to characterize the actions of the war on terror. And even critics of the war on terror, like those who produce Kingdom of Heaven and Assassin's Creed, use the Crusades as both an, an allegory of the war on terror as, as a precursor of the war on terror. Now, more recently, the far right has adopted the Crusades and the Middle Ages as ideals reflecting on their understanding of contemporary politics. Particularly relevant for this case is Brenton Tarrant, the Christchurch mass shooter who justified his killing rampage in a manifesto titled The Great Replacement Towards a New Society, which frames migration towards Western countries in rhetorical terms very similar to those of IS defense, while also quoting Pope Urban II to call for violence. This use of crusading and holy war rhetoric has been expanded beyond the traditional scenarios of the war on terror by the far right. It has been used in America uh, to promote the selling of weaponry. Templar crosses could be seen in Washington during the January 6th insurrection and at Charlottesville in 2017. And it is also present in the global south in countries like Brazil and Colombia. Which is why, at first glance, it is so surprising how Ancestors' legacy approaches the Crusades. Considering the record of destructive creations, one would be justified in expecting some sort of defense or exaltation of crusading. Nevertheless, the game consistently, constant, consistently condemns the wars of the cross both in the Saladin and Teutonic Knights campaign. In the Saladin campaign, the First Crusade is presented as an act of, of unjustified violence legislated by, Seta, by Satan dressed as the Pope and even crusaders within Jerusalem lament the whole endeavor as a gigantic lie. Likewise, the Teutonic campaign is narrated by Hercus Monte, a disgruntled knight and Prussian leader of the revolt that took place between 1260 and 1274. Hence, in the first scenario, the actions of the Teutonic knights in the Baltic are described as a cruel and devastating religious war, with those who resisted being murdered or submitted to slavery with the knowledge and consent of the papacy. Furthermore, the Christianization of pagans is equated to propaganda, and later in the third scenario, new crusaders are described as bandits, lowlifes, and criminals more interested in gold than in religious piety. The fact that the game offers a rather accurate portrayal of the events seems to reinforce Ancestors' legacy's messaging on crusading. Both campaigns follow an accurate chronological order with small deviations for narrative and ludic purposes. Furthermore, some minor details seem to point to the use of primary sources, at least in the case of the Teutonic campaign, of which Nicholas von Jerovshin's 14th century chronicle, The Chronicle of Prussia, seems to be a likely candidate. A similar appreciation can be made about the Saladin campaign, although it is more difficult to pin any specific source since the Sultan is a much more famous historical figure. I have tried to contact uh, Destructive Creations to consult about the historical consultation uh, with no answer, so these are just educated guesses. However, upon a closer look, we can see that the tone that the game uses about crusading narratively and lyrically is not consistent. Ancestors' legacy's approach to the Crusades is rather dissonant, with a relatively accurate portrayal of the events, while the framework of the narrative relies in a heavily ideologized interpretation of the Middle Ages. Furthermore, the condemnation of the whole endeavor is hindered by the demand that the player carry out the violence being criticized. This dissonance is particularly pronounced with the case of the Crusades due to their curious position as a ludic historical space. They are highly politicized and contentious as shown previously, which explains their condemnation from a studio involved in political controversy, while also being accessible in a way that allows and demands that the player participate in this form of violence. This is so also because Ancestors' Legacy's procedural rhetoric is strictly about conflict. Every building the player, the player builds is related to the war effort, with the partial exception of religious buildings. The player can only recruit military units, and every technology is aimed at improving the capacity of soldiers. Also, the game offers no diplomatic options. In Ancestors' Legacy, it is impossible to come to terms with enemies and alliances are fixed, unless, unless the game changes them for narrative purposes. In this way, political and religious rivalries become almost irreconcilable, which is a key, which is key for the way in which the game frames the Crusades. Now, this is particularly poignant for the game's portrayal of Saladin and the Third Crusade. Here, the Sultan is obsessed with jihad and vengeance. He is the sword of Allah. He gets rid of the field of the infidels, forgiving the life of only those who are willing to convert to Islam while executing all others. In, he, in this campaign, other characteristics associated with the Sultan, such as generosity, justice, and mercy, are replaced by a version of Islam that is inherently violent, militant, and ignores its cultural achievements in the Middle Ages. 
The last scenario of the campaign, the fall of Jerusalem, nicely exemplifies the tension between the events and the framing of the game. Although the events correspond with our sources of the period, the tone and resolution of the scenario go hand in hand with an understanding of Islam that is more akin to what one can deduct from I.S. defense. From the beginning, Balen of, Ibe of Ibelin is shown at the more rational side, insisting on negotiation while Saladin is obsessed with vengeance. Although our sources mention that the weakening of the Northern Wall forced the negotiation, in the game this only happens once the citadel has been reached, forcing the player, uh, forcing the player to kill and pillage inside of Jerusalem. Finally, and most ominous, once the scenario is over, Saladin agrees to let the Christians of Jerusalem who do not want to convert to leave, but the tone has a much more sinister implication. During a scene where chained Christians can be seen marching through the desert while they are being whipped by Muslim soldiers under the ominous eyes of hungry vultures, Saladin says, and I quote, the Christian citizens of Jerusalem will be judged accordingly. Those who value their false god above Allah will soon face their sentence in the endless desert as exiles. If their god is as merciful as they say, they will find a safe passage home. If not, I hope Allah will save their lost souls. End quote. Later, after explaining how the Third Crusade ended in a truce between Muslims and Christians, Saladin brings the whole campaign to a resolution by saying that, and I quote, we will never allow any Christian kingdoms to gain influence or jurisdiction over this territory ever again. This is the will of Allah. May his peace be with us always. As spots of blood cover the map of, a map of the Mediterranean from south to north, seeming to imply the advance of Islam into all of Europe. The dissonance between what the Sultan says and the visual rhetoric that accompanies the message uh, highlights the dissonance that is common in Ancestors' legacy simulation of crusading, a superficial accuracy that seems to portray events as they happened, quote unquote, with a tone that implies a condemnation of the religious violence of crusading while inviting the plane to be an active part of it. Although events follow the chronological record and the visual space looks the port, the messaging is a naturalized ideological premise on the, of the relations between Christians and Muslims, unavoidable and irreconcilable civilizational conflict, which the blood spots covering Europe in the final scene predicts will continue to this day. What lies at the heart of this often dissonant messaging about the Crusades is a tension present in virtual historical video games that Adrian Shaw has called the tyranny of realism in her analysis of Assassin's Creed III. In short terms, the tyranny of realism points to the fact that game developers' concerns with accuracy, which more often than not refer to the expectations of the game's perceived audiences, limits the emancipatory potential that historical simulation offers, while also reproducing dominant and problematic historical narratives, highlighting theological notions of history. For the case of Ancestors' Legacy, this is the most obvious in the case of the Teutonic Knights campaign. Previously, I have mentioned that the Teutonic Knights campaign is narrated from the perspective of Hercus Monte, the leader of the Prussian Revolt, which allows for the game's condemnation of crusading. However, and contrary to what might have been expected, the player is asked to carry out these actions by playing as the Order instead of the Rebels, which might probably made more sense from a ludonarrative perspective. In this way, while on the one hand the game showed the Baltic campaign as a colonial, quasi-genocidal endeavor in which bandits, propagandists, and robbers seek to claim a land that does not belong to them with the support of a hypocritical church, on the other hand, the player must strategize, ravage, and kill that subjugated population with whom the narrative clearly sympathizes. The game's objective in various scenarios highlights this dissonance, like in the first and the last scenario in which the player is asked to kill every single Prussian unit and destroy every single building, which emphasizes the portrayal of the Baltic Crusades as an enterprise of total annihilation. Now, it is important to highlight that Ancestors' legacy is not entirely wrong in its evaluation of the Baltic Crusades. Again, there is an element of accuracy in all of this. The wars led by the Teutonic Knights did have colonial incentives, which led to Germans moving into Prussia and settling there. Nevertheless, this had less to do with a physical annihilation of the other, among with a formation of an autonomous Christian state of converted Christians, even if this had to be with the, uh, done by the sword. Uh, the cruelty and violence and rapaciousness of the Crusades are not the point here. The main issue is that the gameplay, which is focused on the imperative of military victory, cannot allow the player to experience a version of the events from the perspective of the defeated or vanquished in a way that would actually lead to the questioning of religious medieval violence that the narrative openly criticizes. 
This is even more telling considering that Destructive Creations is a studio that comes from Poland, a country that sees the defeat of the Teutonic Knights at Grunwald in 1410 as an important part of his national mythos, evidenced in the 1878 famous painting by Polish artist Jan Matievko or the 1910 Grunwald monument in Krakow that was later destroyed by the Nazis and reconstructed in 1976. This is the power of the tyranny of realism that permeates the crusading experience in Ancestor's legacy, the game's commitment to a superficial accuracy in the general narrative, molded by a series of right-wing ideological premises, which is unable to question the violence the whole gameplay relies on, and which can only offer the experience of the victorious conqueror. So, to conclude, Ancestor's legacy portrays crusading in a dissonant way in which the condemnation of the events is supported by superficial accuracy in the chronology of the events, but which is framed from a clash of civilizations mythical perspective. This portrayal of the crusades is, exemplifies the political considerations that video game developers often face when approaching the past, which in the case of destructive creation is really pretty much molded by right-wing tendencies. Now, this is a phenomenon particularly poignant for the Crusades as a mid-historical polemic, uh, mid-polemical historical topic, meaning that they are polemical and contentious, but still playable. And there is a problem when we have these type of issues in game. Uh, finally, Ancestors Legacy is a good example with some of the problems behind the simulation of history and the Crusades, meaning that they often explore the how they happen, how the Crusades happen, but not what were the Crusades or why they happen, which naturalizes them and make them seem as unavoidable. Thank you very much for your time and I'm open to any questions.